When you finish a knitting project, you will be left with lots of tails coming out from different places of the work. You don't want to cut these tails right where they're tied at the knot because that could allow it to come undone and your entire piece could become unraveled. So what you want to do is weave these pieces back into the work to hide them. I'm going to take a large eye blunt needle, darning needle like this, and thread your tail onto the needle. There are many different ways of working this tail back into the work, and there's really no right or wrong way to do it, but some ways hide the tail a little bit more than others. I prefer to weave in my ends while looking at the front of the fabric. That way you can tell if it's going to be visible from the front or not. And I don't really like to weave them in directly on the edge of the fabric. I find that they can sometimes come a little unraveled if you do that. So I usually try to work them to a place that's about an inch in from either edge. So I'm just going to sort of work this in, kind of hiding it a little bit. I use a process called duplicate stitch mostly to follow the strand of yarn that's creating my stitches and sort of mimic that with the tail. So as you can see, right here, this strand of yarn is going down and then it's going under and behind the two legs of the stitch below. So I'm just going to follow that, trace it with my needle so that my tail is mimicking that stitch. And then you can see that that little strand of yarn goes up here, around here, and then back down behind these two legs of the next stitch. So I, again, am just going to trace that with the tail. Now, usually you want to work about an inch or two in one direction and then work back the other direction so that you are again decreasing the chances of the yarn becoming unraveled in the work. So in order to go down and back the other direction, I'm just going to go in and out of a couple of these rows. And as you can see, if you just gently tug that, it does hide the yarn the tail so you won't be able to see it from the front of the fabric. And now I'm just going to follow this strand of yarn underneath the legs of the stitch below, then back up and underneath the legs of the stitch above, back down here and underneath the legs of the stitch below, back up here and behind these two legs, Again, this is called duplicate stitch when you're just retracing the stitches that were made already in your fabric. And then at the end, I always pull my tail through the back of the work. And I try to do so by splitting the yarn of my work. So if you see here, this is one strand of yarn. I'm actually gonna stick my needle through the strand of yarn so that when it comes out the back, it's sort of getting tangled underneath that last stitch. And occasionally I will wrap it just splitting the yarn of another couple of strands on the back of the work to further kind of tangle that in and prevent it from coming undone. And then you can go ahead and snip your tail. I usually leave about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch of space before I cut, just so that when you are stretching the fabric and manipulating it, pulling it in different ways, it doesn't then poke back through the front of the work. But as you can see, that's completely invisible from the front of the work. So this is a great technique to use when you're weaving in your ends.